and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast for the week of August 1st. I'm Terry Morrow, and I'm here with Catherine Haleko. Hi there. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Catherine and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics, because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week, we continued with season two of Only Murders in the Building and season one of Rutherford Falls. So, Only Murders in the Building, season two, episode six, was entitled Performance Review, which applied directly to uh, Cindy Canning's put upon, is she a producer or is she an assistant? I think Cindy thinks she's an assistant. I believe an assistant. I think she thinks of herself as a producer, but oh, honey. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, Poppy is her name. Yes, this show finally remembered that, oh, yeah, didn't we have a thing with Tina Fey going on? Yeah, we probably should revisit <laughs> that, I guess. Right. So, you know, uh, Tina Fey keeps doing her really effortlessly horrible boss. And mm-hmm. uh, this, uh, do we know the name of the actress who plays Poppy? One moment, because please. she plays that specific character very, very well. Yes. Hold on, please. Adina Verson, huh. V-E-R-S-O-N. Well, kudos to her, because she does a good job at letting you know exactly what that kid is all about. Right. But um, she found this uh, guest for Cinda who, uh, you know, says terrible things about Mabel, says that Mabel deliberately cut his finger off with a cleaver. M- Mabel says he was being handsy, and she pushed him, and he accidentally put his hand in the uh, meat Meat grinder in, or some other piece some, of equipment that they have tool. at Long John Silver, which is very <laughs> terrifying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we are, surely that is in fact the case, but. Uh, yes. Uh, Mabel gives Poppy a little pep talk like she should, you know, be more outspoken with Cinda and she should, you know. Stick up to, for herself. Stick up for herself and try to move up the ladder and all that and she makes an effort and of course Cinda shuts her right down um and uh so now possibly she's going to be helping out the other podcasters our podcasters right however very very bad episode for Mabel yeah um you know she they miss the seeing who picked up the thing out of the trash can because Charles was going on about his romance with Jan which they were both horrified about and then her and and what was in the trash can was a glitter bomb because <laughs> they they're trying to trap the killer. Yes, um, yes. So all of her thing. somehow knows how to make a thing with with rubber cement and glitter and a little bit of C four. <laughs> <laughs> Where he gets C for it, let's not ask. Right. So that happens, and then she goes back to her apartment, but Alice has some horrifying thing set up where she's reenacting the murder. I think she's actually, she goes to, she Alice's, goes to Alice's apartment. I thought she's, Alice's studio, and Alice has recreated Mabel's apartment yes, in the that's studio. It. She says, This is my apartment. I, right. for some reason, thought it was actually her apartment, and they were doing it in there, but you're right. She has yeah. reconstructed her apartment in this studio. Right. And that is, you know, all those who never trusted Alice, it's a good confirmation because yeah, that chick you. is up to no good. I don't care what kind of story she tells. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, and then she's on the subway and sees the guy with the glitter all over him and knows it's the killer and we don't actually see what happens but uh oliver's son we guess uh is uh yeah, sends him a video his per- alleged his son, alleged son. <laughs> Sends him a video of of Mabel stabbing somebody on the subway. So bloody Mabel had a very bad week. Yeah. Which, you know, of course, this strengthens very much the certainty that she had absolutely nothing to do with it. But somebody is definitely setting her up. Um, So that was, oh, very sad. I feel very bad for Mabel. Selena Gomez got that hurt look perfect. Yes. Absolutely overwhelmed, devastated. hurt by what's happening now and the wounds that are being opened up from things that happened in the past. Mm-hmm. She rocks that. Good for her. Right. Um, 
And on the theme of performances, we see Charles <laughs> and <laughs> Brazos in a wheelchair with some dementia. A touch of dementia and a, and a wig. <laughs> <laughs> and they bring Jane Lynch's uh, stunt double back right. for a cheap joke about the wheelchair, but a beautiful, beautiful payoff of the entire Jane Lynch arc right. at the end of the episode where Charles <laughs> sends his stunt double in to break up with Jan for him. That was glorious. It was awesome. And <laughs> Jan's just reaction of like, you, what, he's breaking, you're breaking up with me, like just yes. absolute disbelief. <laughs> and then she starts to go with it. <laughs> That oh. was just, oh, unexpected and perfect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the Jane Lynch character. A plus character, performance review. Yes. And, you know, <laughs> Jane Lynch's character has already <laughs> made it clear she will do anything, anything Charles needs. That's she right. is there for it. So anything he go. is weakly unable to do. <laughs> right. That is her job. That's like, well, that is her life's work. <laughs> that could come in handy now that you mention it. <laughs> Don't we all wish we had a double we could send in for some of those things? Yes. Excellent. Poppy needs a stunt double to go in and, you know, yeah, mix it up with Cinda. All right. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Oliver is waiting for the results of a DNA on himself. Right. In case he's accidentally Greek and didn't know it. Right. Which seems like a way to kill time on that plot line for a week. Well, and also just a way to make that be yet another little misdirection and be like, oh, yeah, he is his, you know, <laughs> Will is his son after all. Does anybody think he's Greek? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm wondering, you know, I thought about this after we talked last week. Could this somehow be the way that Teddy is sleeping with Oliver as he promised to do is there some way that he falsified oh. this because uh bleeping with him in something that involved his son is the is real way to very get very appropriate him. because he Teddy feels like Oliver messed with his son so yep. i wonder will we find out that this school pro project was uh sponsored by the Demas by Greek the dip, dip company, company. <laughs> Yes, that's or a great thought. Mm -hmm. Somebody was the the somebody was the delivery guy and just mixed up the results. I really wonder if it's that because because him really not being his son seems like kind of a big thing for this stupid little show, right? But absolutely the way to mess with Oliver, one hundred percent, and absolutely like Teddy is very crafty. Yes, you he know is. or. Yeah, Nathan Lane's character is, mm -hmm. you know, very weasily and exactly could figure out how to do something. So like I mean, it could be that it really is uh, Will really is his son, and he's just releasing that information now to mess with Oliver. But I think possibly the whole thing is a mess mm -hmm. with because mm -hmm. um, they had that scene where in the flashback Oliver sat down between his wife and Teddy, and they kind of exchanged a look. But the kid was already like. What, six years old then? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's not, you know, I don't know. And it could I'm suspicious. Anything. I will believe uh, anything of Teddy. He seems like a shady dude. Right. And um, also, well, still don't trust Alice, which that seems to be borne out. Mm -hmm. And the guy amongst the fans who knows about all the, the little passageways in the Arconia... Mm -hmm. Are we going to revisit that dude at some point? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of this at the time, and I saw somebody else ask about it on t on Twitter or some review online, that, say what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I wonder if the person in the passageways that Lucy saw could maybe have not been the murderer, but uh -huh. somebody who was there to, I don't know, like, fix the whatever that guy said he fixed. Right. And... Maybe Lucy is the murderer. She was accidentally in Bunny's apartment. And <laughs> uh -huh. Probably not. Sweet little Lucy. Sweet little Lucy. Well, I mean, I'm saying accidentally. Yes. But then Charles would have had to be the one who... Now, nah, anyway. 
And, yeah. Uh, just just going to put those out there. <laughs> no feelers, you know? That's how just we do it. We want to make our, po- our podcast tantalizing. Right. Full of drama so that mm-hmm. people will keep listening. Is that how you do it? <laughs> Definitely. Yes. That's the strategy. Tina Fey plays assholes so well. <laughs> she's really she's really got a gift for that. Yes. Um so what else happened in this episode? Um, I feel like we covered the police it the, the unpleasant uh police officer partner oh, yeah, of the person we like. He threatened the Michael Rapport yes, character. He told he everybody to stop podcasting all of them to and stop it. And it just sort of laughs. Right. And uh they thought they the person that texted them texted them on the rooftop was the sympathetic uh, detective, but right. in fact, even though she said they texted her and she said she would meet them, it turns out she's out of state. Right. So, hmm, that's why they they made the plant of the glitter in the trash can, which right. certainly sounds like something that would work. Mm-hmm. What could possibly go wrong? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, the way you do that, kids, is you each station yourself in a different part of the park. Right. So then you can move quickly and also not be distracted by conversation. Mm-hmm. So. Then, rookie mistake. Then you don't just have to rely on accidentally running into the person on the subway <laughs> hours later. <laughs> oh, poor Mabel. Mm-hmm. Pretty soon she'll be keeping Jan company. Uh, Well, speaking of uh, slippery characters who are in things for mixed motives. Yes. Hey there, Rutherford Falls. (laughs) Terry Thomas. Terry Thomas. The name of an old actor, right? There used to be an actor, Terry Thomas. I don't know. Kind of a silly British dude, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Not that I'm aware of, but that doesn't okay. mean anything. Well, maybe there's a lot of old TV on in our house regularly. Yes. <laughs> I will look that up and cut this out if it's not true. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a name of any. Anyway, uh, it we Sounds sort of possible. learned a lot more about a, ba- a lot more backstory mm-hmm. about our mini Shankin antagonist uh, Terry right. of the casino mm-hmm. and lawsuit. And has seemed like sort of a cold, calculating dude, but we found out that he has this conflict with his daughter over his daughter just wanting to bead for fun. Mm. What is the matter with her? (laughs) How dare you? Why would she not want to sit at a table outside a local business and sell them like he sold brownies (laughs) when he was a child? Lemonade and brownies, because white people love lemonade. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and uh you know his son i guess is uh plays lacrosse he approves of everything his son is doing his son is doing all the culturally correct things and his daughter mm-hmm. is learning beating from her grandmother i guess which yep. uh should be another opportunity to uh capitalize on uh, <laughs> the culture but uh um, right. she just wants to give them like a do communist. a DNA test on that girl, Terry. You never know. <laughs> she might be Greek. <laughs> oh, but, dear. Uh, and we met his... Had we, had we met his wife before? I don't think so. She was extremely amusing. Yes. She's like comforting him and telling him everything's okay with the daughter and just let her be herself and then standing up and yelling at the ref, I guess. Screaming at the, <laughs> during the lacrosse game. Yes. And telling people who told her to sit down, what for... Yes. So they're a power couple, those two. Yes. Um, and it's it's very real that they have those, like, tents on the sidelines. Yeah. Because if you go to a soccer game or a lacrosse game or whatever, uh-huh. um, you will see those. Things. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. I have never been. But it makes sense because you would like some shade. Yeah. From, yes, from my which... son had a, had a short lacrosse career. So. Ah. You need some shade from which you can send out some shade. Right, exactly. That's that's the plan. And we've also had an introduction of Regan's cousin, Mm -hmm. who is sort of... uh, Somewhat flaky, but... (laughs) uh, A a stereotype of a young person, 
who just mm-hmm. is sort of silly and unfocused and um and she's filling in for Terry's assistant yes. who's somewhere I forgot yeah but really just just looking at her phone most of the time mm-hmm. so give her some beads i bet she'd sell them um <laughs> So the uh, the reporter Josh was actually more confrontational with Terry than honestly I would expect an NPR reporter to be. Mm-hmm. I would expect him to just be totally on the side of the Native Americans against the big bad capitalists, and he seemed to be sort of the other way around. So that's yeah, why he's I mean- not getting the assignments when he sits around the table, I guess. I thought it, that he was being a little condescending. Yeah, that's like, true. you know, this is why. Why don't you do things, you know, the way your culture tells yes. you to? Oh, that's and true. it's like, wait, whose culture is it, <laughs> and who gets to decide what is right for our culture? Yeah. So yeah, I I guess that fits. Um, so and, you know, yeah, Terry I fa- I sort place. of felt like yes, Terry put him in his place, and I. You know, you're meant to be the, like Terry's this, you know, kind of bloodthirsty dude. <laughs> but um, but I thought he had kind of had a point there. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. This episode did, just as the previous episode tried to humanize Nathan somewhat, mm-hmm. uh, this one definitely was filling in the picture of Terry, not just as the ruthless casino owner, but as somebody right. who had a lot of, uh, you know internal con it um a lot of backstory that caused him to be where he is now right and at the intersection of wanting money and power and wanting to stand up for his people Mm -hmm. so that's a that's a tricky intersection good luck with that man right (laughs) but nathan of course delivers him what he's been wanting which is a link to rutherford industries rutherford Mm -hmm. or rutherford uh, yeah, uh, so, so now yeah. it's going to be on Rutherford that, Inc. Yes, so that poor PR lady. Oh, huh. <laughs> I hope you had a vacation before this, right? Perhaps you'd get like back some on that. Get back on that treadmill desk. <laughs> get to work. Yeah. So this is going to be sticky, but uh, I don't know. I like it. I like it less when Nathan's a punching bag and he's just stepped right in it. Yes. So we'll see where it goes from here. And not much Regan this episode, not really. Not much. Yeah. Except everybody now knows, ex- except maybe Nathan, that she was hooking up with Josh. I feel cut. like Nathan might know because <laughs> she, he saw them together like in the morning and yes. wearing each other's shirts That's right. and stuff. Yes, but uh, her cousin is giving all the deets to Terry. Right. So. Um, yeah. On we go. Mm-hmm. But it was it was a, a a good episode for that character and interesting and yeah you know maybe a little easy you know he's a capitalist because when he was a kid right white people took advantage of him exactly he's gonna get all the money and power and it's like well I mean that's yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. sure right um, but uh, I liked it better when he was nah I I liked it I, the backstory was good and uh, the conflict with his daughter is good. And uh, and the little conversation they had in the car where he was like, you know, here's a business proposition for you, you know, <laughs> do this, do that. And then he was like, otherwise you can't go and be with your grandmother at the cultural <laughs> center. And she's like, are you serious? He's like, no, of course not. <laughs> he's not going to. He's not going to go that far. He's just using whatever appears to be <laughs> at his disposal at the moment. Right, but he knew that that, they both knew that was never a factor. Right. So. So. I I also liked that, I don't know if you noticed this, but when they first showed her what she was working on Uh was a a Minecraft (laughs) um, (laughs) character. That's what she was beating. Uh So that was a nice detail. Absolutely authentic, 100%. Mm -hmm. Well, why not? Well, it's all, it's just a little nod to the, like, yes, you know, it's not all about the past. It's, right. It's about living your culture today yes. as well. Charming. Yes, definitely. So, 
Um, anything else uh, we have to say about either of these? I don't think so. All right. Well, next week, Only Murders in the Building, Season 2, Episode 7, drawing ever close to, closer to the end, yes. we have Flipping the Pieces. Uh-huh. Dun, dun, dun. And Rutherford Falls, Season 1, Episode 5, History Fair. Uh-huh. Judging from the uh, little image on uh, Peacock for that episode, it involves costumes. Okay. And that's going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes. We have something new for you every weekday. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, Terry. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.